April 2011, this is basically um, last fall, is their third year, right? So they're ready to, to graduate when they come to the spring of 2015, if they stay on track with the, their coursework. So the so we did an analysis on the current semester, which so this is basically uh, fall 2014 data, um, to see what's the credit case, uh, how many credits they have taken for graduation. Because um, in our campus, uh, there's a small group of students who keep taking courses without filing for graduation or without realizing they are, they're ready to graduate. Or some of them keep taking courses that doesn't relate exactly to their degrees. So they spend their coursework in the college, but you know, they need to follow the rules graduate. So here we are talking about under the credits. So how many is up to? 111 to 120 and 291 to 200. Tell them what's the full-time number of students or what's the part-time number of students. So how many students can we have that in the course we're conducting? And this part below is the, is the graduation data um, we have in the campus. For, um, for the past two years. Um, we can jump to this part, is the faculty faculty benefits. And then the, the total enrollment of that. Um, this has always been a challenge um, on it. I remember the first time we did that was Rob give us a, a whole bunch of uh, PowerPoint presentation from Prince College regarding the, fac regarding the faculty teaching workload. And inside is showing, you know, what's the faculty, so how many, what's the department name, how, fa how many faculty they have, and um, how many enrollments they have. It's like Excel spreadsheet. And what I've been heard is it takes a month preparing that data. Like I said, by the time they prepare it, the data is already old because the course got job, the students got job from the course. Now this is live data that you tell them how many faculty you have in your department, and how many students you are serving. You can go deeper than that and also see how many courses you are offered on that. And how many courses are online courses, how many courses are in person, how many courses are um, white based course. So it's only the data in here. Here is a very small portion, which I will get to the to the bigger one in a minute. I'm telling you what's the department name and their token enrollment and also the number of faculties on that. Okay. The first time we show this to actually to see um, in some schools in our college. And that's, they told us this is the first time we can actually see this data without looking at two pieces of paper um, for the faculty teaching work. And this report um, is some work to put it behind the scene. Um, it is because you got to get the data from one source for the expenditures and also the college faculty. You got to merge another data with the, with the college um, enrollment, student enrollment data. But that's the thing with the PI system. It is work to pick but as long as, as soon as the data got pushed out, got validated, got tested, the benefit is, is tremendous for users to use that, that particular system. Because it saves the time on the administrative part of every single semester, right? You don't need to spend hours or days or months producing this one single report. It is working in the, in the um, IT part to produce this report, but as soon as it's pushed out, if I want to change that particular report, this one, it only take me about five minutes. Because all I need to do is change the term name, that's all. And the report will be produced. So in the long run, it is a saving time and a saving, a saving the effort from the user part of view um, using, to produce a strong report. So any this any is questions on what you're seeing? Yes. Do you have an FTE indicator on this uh, dashboard? Yeah, we, we actually that's um, come from recent, we, we produced some reports for provost office in the past couple months and one of the big reports that we do for the campus. And we can calculate the activities on that based on their work teaching work program. I don't know, based on the calculation of their, um, their titles. On that. You're talking about full-time equipment. Full-time enrollment. Uh, full-time enrollment yeah. on that. Yeah, we can do that for the, um, you're talking about this part, right? Yes. Yeah, that's total enrollment, but I'm assuming that 
some of those students are full time, but some of them are half time or three quarter time. So the full time enrollment you know, it takes two half time and convert some to one full time. That's what they so what we did is uh, we did the total calculation of the enrollment. We also did to total calculation of the credits, and we divide by credits by certain numbers to get a um, Before it does to be done, you know, that would take a long time. Now all we need to do is do this report, create calculation. And that sense you integrate the system. I believe we're talking before that all the data is separate programs and it's in forever. Yes. Now you're able to pull out much faster. That's right. Um, we also work, another one is um, we work out with the business office and also the enrollment management office for the revenues for the school. Because the fundamental rule at the end is how much tuition you collected right, for some students. And our school, because I think we're a public institute, and we have a certain group of students that do not pay the tuition to the school. Um, so if you count those students at high count, well, the high count looks great you know, for that particular year. But if you look at deep into the tuition, you realize you know, there's a um, certain group of students don't pay on that. So we created, created this report with users, because <coughs> IT obviously does not have that idea of how that revenue report is supposed to be. So the user worked with us to produce this revenue report. And in the revenue report, we separate the students by categories. After we set it by categories, we do the activities. And then we do the calculation. Are they in state? Are they out state? Are they in New York City or out of New York City? We did calculation like that. We have a predicted um, revenue for the, for the college. And this user, at the very beginning, was, um, was not quite sure if this can be produced because they had been on the user's mind for a long time, but nobody, no office can do that without the, you know, this kind of data. After we did that, this was quite amazing, and the total number at the end matched very closely to the total number of tuition we collect from the college. I'll give you one more example. Um, the vice president for enrollment management during periods of registration would always want to know on a daily basis how many people have registered, and his assistant used to always develop that report by hand. So she would, um, have to do it on a spreadsheet. Um, she would have to get some information from IT. She'd walk over to IT, pick up the information from IT, bring it back, and then do all sorts of calculations to create a spreadsheet. It took her, during periods of registration, it would take her about four hours every morning. And if she wasn't there, no one else could do it. If she wasn't there, or if she was on vacation, she'd out sick. That's what would happen. So we worked with her, it took about four weeks for us to work with her to understand all of the mathematical equations that were used. And once that was done, the report is now, flash report is now put into this tool. Now the tool is in, lags by a day. So uh, we get a report from our, uh, our system of record, PeopleSoft, and then it has, it's processed and it comes to us, so it's a day lag. But that report is now available um, every morning for her, or for the vice president, or for other people who need to see it. And it takes, all you have to do is log in. And all that time has been returned back to her. She's left the, our, our campus, uh, unfortunately, since then. Uh, she's now in Florida, I think. But um, you know that kind of manual effort that took uh, one person, it was one person's job, is now something that's completely automated and available in a more transparent way. That's the value of these kinds of tools. And so you can have all of these reports that are for a particular role, a chair, a dean, a vice president, um, or you can uh, work, and Lee will show you later, you can create your own report, and you can keep it in your own personal dashboard, and that only you can see it. And as the data is updated in the system, it'll update on your report. So you don't have to worry about the timeliness issue. You don't have to redo the report. That's a real advantage of this tool. Yes. How long it took you to, to develop these? Um, it's, that's a good question. Um, because that's a question on every TV mind, right? Mm -hmm. How much effort you got to do, how long it takes. Uh, when Ron came on board in 2010, 
um, this is Rock's idea, we need to clean the AI system up because people need to report. So we started evaluating measures um, from, that, from September 2010 until the end of uh, December. We evaluated Oracle, SAP, SAP, um, Jasper, Soft. At that time, not that many AI systems, especially open source, but not that many. We also took a look about IBM companies, but IBM, the price is too high for us to think about it. SAP, we didn't go because we are not um, SQL Server environment. Also, SAP, for me, when I look at the, the uh, admin part, it wasn't a very clear development on the admin part. And also, we are Oracle Shop. And Oracle did help us to set it up from the very beginning. Um, so we went for Oracle. So we started development in the beginning of 2011. We did a very small portion at that time. Here's the thing with AI. You cannot have a full room on every single data point you can collect and just stop to use. We cannot do that. And also developers won't be able to digest it and produce it. So we started only with student development. I remember when we first started with this page, we have like three pages, like three reports. We started. We only started with student development and we get the data collect and talk to the, to the to the users, to the points of experts in the in the campus. So in the July of 2011, we already have um, the executive dashboard up for it for student enrollment, student academic spending, on um, college budgeting. So the this part, uh, the faculty teaching workload, along with the college budgeting and student enrollment, already up by the end of July. Um, and then we put more things, the other things are developed. I should say the system was pretty rounded up. Um, as you can see, as current one, well, it's still updating almost on a weekly basis. There's a new thing to come out of the system. I should say, probably at the end of um, 2012, we have the system pretty kind of up. Pretty so That's what we did. Um, so it took you like a year to develop but, but the whole dashboard? Um, I should say, it took about seven, eight months to develop our first um, live system with the security, with the dashboard, with the data points. It take about seven months. Seven, seven so months. we made it available to users at that time, seven, eight months. We did training. Uh, we uh, spoke to the cabinet and uh, let people know that it was available. We started with an early group and then grew it. Uh, so the, the number of users started small. Uh, we were looking for people who were early adopters. And then um, as we added, what happened is that more dashboards were added because people needed questions answered. So people would come to us and say, I have a problem with this area, or I have a problem with that. I'd like to know more information. Can you help us? Or we have to go through an accreditation. We need this information in our school of education or for nursing. So that's how it evolved. And that, that's how the user base grew. Also, in our, um, our tool, uh, in PeopleSoft that was uh, just emerging for the uh, for our campus and for other parts of our, our system did not have a lot of reporting. So this played a reporting uh, tool uh, or reporting role uh, for the PeopleSoft system as well. So that's that's how it evolved. And I would I would say that it's still continuing to change because what's happened now is that we have so many dashboards that uh, we have some clutter. So we now have to go back and go through a second effort to refine it. Another thing that we need to do, for example, is be able to provide data to counselors and to students based on this data so that they can see uh, their own progress and bring this together with some of the other tools that I mentioned that we showed earlier in the diagram so that there's a richer sense of data. Most of this data comes from our budget reporting system um, from different files uh, that come from the uh, application enrollment process and from the PeopleSoft system. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Um, yes. Uh, yeah. um, but do you have people dedicated to this project? Very small staff. It's Lee and a, and a few other part-time. But they, they were dedicated to this project uh, home. No, we are not. No. We just don't have the resources to have a dedicated team. There are some schools that have 20 or 30 people just doing business intelligence. We don't have that luxury. So it's a very small team. 
of very committed, talented people. So it's Lee and, and really one or two part-time uh, uh, people who assist her. In, in terms of man hours, how many man hours a week or a month do you put into this? Um, try to get a little bit. Well, we are, um, I'm a full time. So and the only thing, but this is not the only thing. This is not the only thing, like Ron said. Um, we also have a, we have a full time for like about six months. And then we become, we become part time. Um, now we have one full time and part time. But most times during the development process, just me and the part time. It's, what, what is your department? What is the name of your department? IT. That's I, just IT? Just IT. Okay. Um, I mean, this is a huge implementation, obviously, um, in the size of the implementation and data. But I think our group is very dedicated, dedicated to the to the course, and also we get a very clear sense and support from the upper management from Ron um, to tell us exactly, you know, where to go for the direction regarding, you know, what type of groups, uh, the user group we need to concentrate on. When should we get the the workshops on the users, you know? Um, what type of feedback we get from users, and Ron has did a lot on, I don't know, marketing for less, like sense of the word, marketing for this tool to the, to the community. We go to the, you know, we did many presentations for the cabinet, for the deans, and the department chairs, also make it visible for the whole CUNY system, because we are only in the first college started this system. So that really take up a lot of pressure from, as a developer sense of the word. You know, so we, all we need to do concentrate on development, we don't need to deal with other things. Another thing is some of our users have been very supported on this kind of data because if a user gives you sense of view about what type of data they're looking for, they save you a tremendous amount of time. You don't have to sit in back in the office, figure out why the data doesn't show up as the way you want to show up because there could be some parameters and you have to apply to get a report as the way it's supposed to be. So if you get some expertise of the user, which we are fortunate to have some of the users on campus, it help us to run up the report, help us run up the data, and that's, like I said before to the gentleman. Yeah, they, help they, help, they help to improve the, the development. Yes, the it users, does. They give a different mm -hmm. viewpoint that's right. of the, how they need it. That's right. right. Yeah, so this, you know, I think we've demonstrated that this could be done uh, at relatively low cost within an existing uh, infrastructure of people. So it was redirecting that, that Lee wasn't working on other developments, but we felt that it was one of the most important things we could do for our campus. So it's still evolving. And so to your question about how long does it take, it takes a while to, to get, and you have to think of this as phases and versions. So you do phase one, phase two, phase three, and you keep iterating to make it better and better and refine it. So what we thought we would do is maybe Lee will uh, review a few more of the, of the uh, reports, and then what we could do is actually create a report, uh, and you could create it. We'll, we'll work with you to create a report and answer a question that you might have on your campus using our campus's data. Does that sound okay? So since I'm here, I may as well get to the, um, um, that's another thing I'm going to show very briefly. This is the uh, expenditure data for, that is separated by each academic school. And if I want to get to the detail of this data, this is the detailed data regarding for each department was the class type at the total enrollment, total contact hours, which that's part of hours we calculate for the teaching workload and also the total workload hours and how many instructors they have in the department. Fall, this is for fall 2014. Now, if I want to know the details to see how many instructors teaching for here. Let me see that. Okay. Um, I mean, a separate tab you're telling me, you know, what's the instructor teaching load already running on that. And here um, is telling us in the chart view how many professors full-time professors we have on campus. And that's um, by title, so uh, full professor, associate professor, assistant professor, lecturer, that sort of thing. So the, the, you have the paper is on the bottom pointed to tell you the number of uh, professors on here. It's, I mean, it's a view that the, the department chair, especially deans, want to have. 
you know, beginning of the semester, middle semester, end of the semester, because they want to have a clear sense of how many factors teaching on what. And before they request every report, you may take days, weeks, by time to get it, but doesn't really have a lot of data on that. Okay, so in here, they're telling me a few things. Here's another thing about the PI report, the OEIE report, and also general PI report. You're reading one report, you look at one line of data, but not only one line of data, you're reading many data points. Like for example, this one telling me what's the class <coughs> name, what course they are teaching, um, what's the enrollment numbers on the course, oh, this one, um, what's the enrollment number on the course, and also what's the total number on the workload. So tell me many, many things regarding this when seeing a professor. Now, if I want to have a comparison between the professors, this will be the report I go for. Right? So if I have a full-time professor, if I have five full-time professors and 10 adjunct professors, I want to see how the teaching workload goes in the, in the department. So this made available for the, um, for the department chairs. And this department is reflecting whatever is the data on the top. Um, many reports I know users used to get is they only get a number and the, the type of it. Like, I want to know, if the chair wants to say, I want to know how many people enrolled in English courses in general, uh, in the English department, and what's in enrollment. You only get a number, or you have 2,000 students enrolled in the English courses. Now, BI report, so even though you see these summarized data, they're always detailed behind the scenes. So the users say, well, show me that 2,000 students on the list. It can be very easily pull up in PI reports. So you're not only looking at a particular number on that, you're looking at all the detailed data backed up from that number. Mm -hmm. The next one is, um, if this is a very general report, and also detailed report for our enrollment data, this is telling me um, in fall 2014, how many graduated from many, how many undergraduates you know, was the unit taking progress, which mm -hmm. can help us come to the ITEs. And um, yeah, the ITE calculations. Yeah. And also on the bottom, this part is information per class. Okay, so here's telling me again, this is the C count. Before the data you saw before is the individual head count. Um, so the seat count is telling me how many seats that's opened, that's registered in this particular semester. And what's the instruction mode? Are they online courses? Are they personal course? Are they um, back in hands course? Um, and in this one, I'm telling you what's the seat count for the students' courses? And what's the, uh, the class? How many classes these students are taking? So you're looking at one simple data, for example, here, but they're telling you a few things, right? How many enrollment and how many classes you have here. Um, this is one of the biggest report we have on campus because we're indicating all the class. So listed below is all the class information we have for the fall 2014. And the threshold in here, the fall semester is over, it's already over. So the threshold here, I think is, um, 10 in here. So any number below to 10, the, the, the threshold show up. So if the department chair and the deans a very good sense what courses are filling up quickly and what course need to be more work on that. You need to cancel the course, you immerse the course instead of waiting for the last minute for things to happen. Because every day the data got updated. So they can open up to see this every day. Now and they just add that it's sometimes okay to have that red dot that shows a course has less than 10 because it could be a tutorial. So you still have to look at each course differently. But as Lee said, it does allow uh, the dean or the chair to merge sections, for example, uh, and make things more efficient. And this also comes out in the true time because it's like that one day out. There's no one day yes. lag, right. So they, during reg the registration in early part of the semester, that's how they use this report. They're on it every day. They're and looking at this and kind of scan. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Do we need to close or merge? Right. And so, you know, at different times of the semester, this tool is used in different ways. Mm -hmm. So if I go to any of the link here, it also tells me the, um, 
the student roster, of course. And so basically they are in one place and you can see so many information, so much information regarding the course that offer for the student roster. And you can see we already have grade down here because the semester ready class. So would you like to see at this point what it takes to create a report as a user? So Lee can walk you through that process. And as she's getting to that screen, I just want to mention that you know the, the, this is not a tool that's used for uh, reporting on the status of the institution. This is a tool that's used for day-to-day -day informed decision making. So it's used by a chair or a dean or a vice president to kind of gather data and make decisions. But we're not using this tool for reporting for official college purposes. That's used by our, our other office that deals with that kind of reporting. They use this tool, but that's not the tool, uh, it's not the tool to be used because the data, as we said, changes every day. So, and, and that is sometimes confusing because people want the truth, right? These, these, these systems are supposed to be the truth. Well, but if somebody's registering uh, and their uh, the registration is at 10 today, tomorrow it's at 12, well, it's going to be different. So it's for very dynamic purposes. Okay. So this is the tool that is called Answers. And basically, it's the tool that allows uh, the user, if they have a little bit of training, um, or a, a, it could be a SQL type script. Uh, for those who are SQL uh, oriented, um, or uh, it's something that Lee will do to uh, to create a report for a user and either add it to our, our uh, dashboard or make it a personal dashboard for an individual. So it gives it's a way for people to learn, to practice, and to create their own reports. Um, but the idea here is that they, we don't we didn't want people standing in line at IT. So IT would do the report. We wanted to train users to make their own reports because that's what's empowering about this. So please. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to create a very simple report and I'm going to talk about how the report got created. And I'm going to show you the result. And afterwards, you can tell me what the report is. Okay. To give you an idea of, of, of how the course is working. So I'm just going to create a very simple report for the enrollment for the last couple of years we had in the system. Um, our um, ERP system can first my life. So I'm just going to choose a semester name. Um, there's a session for semester. I'm going to choose the translated semester name. And I'm going to choose M4 ID. M4 ID is a student ID we have for each single student. And everything on the left is all those that, that, ex that shows all of the data elements. So you can see just by this view that there's many more that it's extensive, so you really have to engage the subject matter expert in enrollment management or on the faculty who really knows the nuances of the data in order to make this accurate. Okay, so I choose four fields. Okay, now I'm going to do the result. It's going to take a minute for it to come out. So what it does here, so it's telling me that semester, you can see this is translated by whatever this data is. Um, so semester of 2011, these are the student IDs that we wrote. Now I want to do the calculation to see how many students we wrote in here. So I'm going to go back to the table. And I'm going to calculate the IDs. Obviously, the right count down here. So I'm going to tell them how to see. There we go. Um, and I can move it around for the data to show. I don't have to show these two columns if I don't want to. Okay. So I say, okay, well, obviously, this is more tuning on it. I want to know, these are students that actually get to the courses. I want to know the true number of how many actually registered and stayed in the course on that. So I'm going to pick out another parameter here. Student so enrollment status. And I'm going to say, give me any one that's enrolled. And that's the criteria is E for enrolled. So I'm going to say, Anything that we on it in this itself. Okay, this is my pivot table I was working on. Okay. I can go back to pivot table and tell them, give me a chart on um, the one you were looking at your show before. I can change the chart. Okay. 
So if you need to make a presentation, import this into Excel or PowerPoint, it's very easy to do that as well. So it's very, I mean, you can't work out developer, but once you're done, you shift to users. It's very easy on user part of this So what do you want to do in the... So pick a problem on your campus, and let's, let's see.